In this lesson, we're going to talk about um, opening a file and reading certain criteria from that file based on an input from the user. Now, this is the type of thing that you are going to most likely need to use at GCSE, and it's this sort of um, higher level programming that you will need in um, at GCSE level. Obviously, it goes on uh, further than this as well. I would just like to point out um, that there are more than one ways of doing this, and there may be much more quicker ways of doing this, but I am going to do this in a way that is um, straightforward and probably the simplest way to go about opening, reading a file, and displaying um, items in that file based on a user's input. So the first thing I need to show you is this text file we have. I've called it ID, just a notepad file. Now I have um, some criteria in here. I have a, um, a number, a um, unique identifier for that, um, for that line, and a first name and last name. So the number, first name, last name, number, first name, last name, all the way through. So what my program will do is if I put in somebody's um, number, their ID number, it will then display their first and last name. And I could add other items to this list as well to allow me to get more information about that person. So the first thing we need to do is we need to um, open up that, um, that text document. And the way you open something in Python is you need to save the opened text document into a variable. So I'm going to call that variable ID. And in that variable, I'm going to tell Python to open id.txt, which is the file on my desktop. And I'm going to ask it to open it in read plus mode. That means that I can read the file and I can write to the file. I can basically do whatever I want to that file. So what I need to do now that I have the file open and I have it open in uh, read plus mode, which means I can read and write the file, is I um, need to actually read the file itself into another variable. So let's just call this test for a minute. And we're just going to read the um, ID. And then we're going to close the ID as well. So what this does is it takes my ID and it's read the information which is inside there and it has put that information inside this test variable and then it has closed the ID variable for me. So now we need to look at um, the information that is inside that text document. The information inside here is currently separated by a space, so we need to split this information down. So we have position 0, position 1, and position 2. At the moment, if this information is read, it's all being read as basically one position. So we need to split it down. In order to split this down, um, we're going to need another variable name. So I'm going to just call this list01. And this is going to split my test variable. So I just do test.split like this. Now, if I wanted to split, um, say for example, these were separated by a comma, I could put a comma in the um, brackets here and it would split them every time it finds a comma. But because there's nothing in the brackets, it means it is going to split them every time it sees a space, which is fine for this example. So what's happening here then? So list01 is now going to contain a split version of a test. So it's going to contain um, these items, but now they're saved at position 0, 1, 2, and so on. So let's just print this so we can see what is actually going on. So we'll print list01 and we'll just see what's happening here. Um, let's call this... Um, Let's call this split for a second. Okay, so it's not found my directory here. Um, I think it might be because I'm saving this in the wrong place. Let's try this again. File, save as. Yeah, it's because I've saved it into documents. It ID is on the desktop, so this needs to also be saved on the desktop. Something very important to remember there. And then let's try again. There we go, so 
Um, now that they're both saved in the same place, so you've uh, just seen that appear on the desktop there, we can see that it's printed out um, my uh, the documents and it has got them all in separate positions in this list. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. And um, so it was actually put it into a list for us, which is what we wanted. So we now need to look at um, searching the list. So we need to find out um, the number that somebody wants from the list. So let's reuse ID for a minute because I just end up thinking of loads of variable names. Um, we want the user to input the ID number. Um, it needs to be a string because uh, the list is a string, so we need to make sure that input this is a string. Um, input and then enter the ID number. Now, this is obviously going to allow the user to enter an ID number in, and we're going to use a while loop here, but we're going to use it in a slightly different way. So we've used while loops in the way that we've said while um, something is equal to something or while something is not equal to something. What we're going to do is we're going to use while as a check now. We're going to say that while ID, so this ID here, um, is not in the uh, split list, so it's not in this list here, which has been split, uh, so that's list 01. We want to write, or print, sorry, invalid ID, and we will just have the user um, just type it in again. So we print invalid ID and then we put the same variable here for the user to um, input uh, another ID number just in case they've, uh, they've put it in wrong or something. Okay, so this is the interesting part here. So we need to find the position of ID in list 01. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find the position of ID in the list. So we need to find out what position um, this is in here. So if we just open the text document, 111 is stored at position 0. So if my user entered in 111, I would need to find out, I'd need to know that that was actually stored at position 0 to then be able to print out the next two things from it. So in order to find out the position of something, we need to use the index function. So I'm just going to use i for a second as my variable. So when i equals, I'll explain this in a second, index id. So what I'm saying here is that um, the we're looking in the list, the list 01, which we split earlier, and we're looking for the position, which is index, and we're looking for the position of the id. So whatever the user has typed in here, we want to find the position, and that position will be saved into i. So, just again here, if the user types in 111 for the id, the position is 0. So 0 will be saved in i. We then need to just make sure that that is actually an integer, because we're going to be using that to uh, go through the list in just a second. So I'll just change i into an integer there. Now the last piece of the puzzle here is just to print out each item. So I print out list 01 and I want to uh, print out position i. So what this is going to do is it's going to print out, so the user has entered in, the user has entered in 111 as the id they're looking for. The index has then found that the position of that is zero, and I'm now printing out list item zero, so it will print out 111 for me. I then need to print out the next item. Now, obviously, depending on what ID people put in, it will change um, our starting point, so it's not always going to be zero. But what it won't change is where the first name and where the second name is. So the first name will always be the next one along from I, and the second name will always be the one along from that. So you could say i plus 1 and then i plus 2 will get you those two positions. So if we do this as list 01 and then we do i plus, oh, plus 1 
and then list O1, and then I plus two, we should see that uh, the program finds the position of the ID, then it prints the next item to the ID, and then it prints the item next to that as well. So let's just have a look at this and see if this is working. Okay, so um, as before, it's printed out our, um, our text document at the top as a list, and that should just sort of give us a reference for the numbers as well. So if I wanted 222 as my ID, I press enter, it's found 222, and then it's printed the 222, it's printed the next item and the item after that as well. If I was to print 333, just to prove it's working, it finds 333, the next item, and then the next item from that as well. So 333, email, and then follow from there. So this is um, kind of a basic first steps into opening a program, um, looking, uh, sorry, opening a file, looking into that file, and then matching um, uh, positions in that file and then printing out positions and then the next positions from them. Um, it's something that you may need to use um, in your GCSE, so it is something that you should have a look into. So have a practice of this and uh, there'll be more on this later on. Okay, thank you for watching.